वेलकम बैक एस इन दिस वीडियो आई बी अपडेटिंग माई ऑप्टिक्स के लिए एफ एस आर फ्रेम जनरेशन गाइड वर्क के ऑप्स के एक्सपेडिशन थर्टी थ्री ओल्डर बिल्ड्स ऑफ ऑप्टिक्स के लिए मॉड आर नॉट स्टेबल इन दिस गेम कॉजेज द गेम टू क्रैश रैंडमली द लेटेस्ट आरिया बिल्ड ऑफ ऑप्टिक्स के लिए वर्जन जीरो पॉइंट सेवन पॉइंट सेवन प्रीव्यू इलेवन इम्प्रूव ऑप्टिक्स के लिए एफ एस आर फ्रेम जनरेशन एंड हार्टफिक स्टेबिलिटी इन दिस गेम सो जस्ट मेक श्योर यू आर यूजिंग दिस बिल्ड और एनी थिंग न्यूर देन इट वर्क क्लैप डाउनलोड इट बाय क्लिकिंग ऑन दिस डॉट सेवन सी लिंक है I'll give the direct download link for this build in the description of the video. We'll be using the latest version of Lyle's Fix that removes the 30 fps cap from the cut scenes. It also removes the black bars from the top and the bottom sides. Expand the asset section. Click on the dot zip link. I'll be playing the PC Game Pass version of the game, so I'll download the Xbox version of the mod. If you own the Steam version of the game, download the Steam version of the mod. Xbox dot zip. We'll be using D3 D12 proxy to fix the broken Unreal Engine 5 Lumen Global Elimination that occurs on Windows PCs with integrated GPUs like the one in RAW Gallery. Expand the assets section. Click on the dot zip link. Before installing these mods, would like to thank Keymailer and Xbox for providing me with a free monthly subscription of PC Game Pass. This subscription gives us access to hundreds of games. We can play these games for as long as we want until our subscription expires. Games from first party Microsoft Studio and even third party studios are included with PC Game Pass. Even EA Play membership is included. In India Microsoft even supports UPI mode of payment. We get to play many AAA games day one of their release. First I'll be installing Optic Scale mod. Open the mods archive file. Copy the highlighted files. Four of them. Need to paste them in the games store directory. Open Xbox PC app. Go to My Library. Select the game. Click on the three dots here. Click on Manage. Click on Files. Then click on Browse here. Open the Games Install folder. There it is. Open Content folder. Open Sand Wall folder. Open Binaries folder. Open Win GDK folder. Paste the mod files here. Now just change the name of Optics Killer dot TLL file to Win MM dot TLL. W I N double M. Just open Optiscaler dot ini file. From here, just set TX12 Upscaler to XCSS. As I'll be using Optiscaler FSR frame generation, I'll set FG type to OptiFG. Click on File, click on Save, Close. We are not done yet. Open the Games Install directory again. Files, Browse, Game folder, Content folder. Sandfall folder, plugins folder, Nvidia folder, DLSS folder, Pinebase folder, third party, Win64. Copy this DLL file, nvngx underscore DLSS. Paste it in the same directory where you pasted Optiscaler mod files. Backtracking. Content folder, Sandfall, Pinebase, WinGTK. Right here. Change its name to nvngx dot DLL. This will expose the in-game DLSS setting. Optics Killer mod has been installed. Now I'll be installing Lyle's Fix. Open its archive file. Open Sandfall folder, Pinebase folder, WinGTK folder. Copy all of the files present inside this folder. Just need to paste it in the same directory where we pasted Optics Killer mod files. Content Sandfall Pinebase WinGTK right here. Now I'll be installing D3 D12 proxy. Open the proxy's archive file. Copy the two files present inside this archive file. Again, paste it in the same directory where you pasted Optiscaler mod files. Game folder, content, Sandfall, binaries, WinGTK, right here. Its file name is TXJ. This is why I did not use TXJ file name for Optiscaler mod for the PC Game Pass version of the game. The game's profile does not pop up automatically in Adrenaline software, which is required to access Adrenaline settings. One way to fix this issue is by adding the game's exe file to Adrenaline manually. Just open the WinGTK folder. This is the game's main exe file. Select it. Right-click. Show more options. Click on Send to and select this option Desktop. Create shortcut. Go to your desktop. Here you'll find this shortcut file. Sandfall. WinGTK Shipping. Exe. We need to add this file to Adrenaline. Open Adrenaline software. Open Adrenaline's gaming section. Click on the three dots here. Click on Add a game. Click on Desktop. 
look for the game shortcut file there it is fanfall bin gdk shipping dot exe select it click on open i have already done that games and in profile will load up here look for it there it is sandfall these are the adrenaline settings for the game i have enabled free sync and vsync anti lag setting enabled as well for this game you can even use afmf2 but at lower fps values like 30 to 40 noticeable artifacts will be produced around the character models just to be clear after using unreal engine 5 lumen global elimination fix game will become more demanding then the game running without this fix, especially during the cutscenes. For this game, I have set the UMA buffer size to 6 GB. My is running on BIOS version 341. I have installed Alice's latest official GPU driver that adds support for AFMF 2.1. Using a 27 watts manual profile, all three power values set at 27 watts. Set the resolution to 720p. CPU boost disable. Connected my 8 bit to Ultimate 2C controller to Ally via 2.4 GHz wireless mode. Make sure to launch the game from Adrenaline, otherwise Adrenaline settings won't load up. Launch game. Make sure you are not using a third party OLA like Afterburner or RTSS, otherwise Octiscalers, Hotfix won't work properly. I'll just use Adrenaline's OLA to show you the performance metrics, there it is. Graphics settings, I have set the upscaler to TLSS, this means the mod is working. Using its quality preset, resolution scale 66.6%, no FPS cap applied. In game vsync disabled, display mode full screen, 720 view resolution, post processing effects disabled. Everything set to medium except for the post process setting, set it to low. Apply the settings. Alright, we are in. This is the continent, very demanding area. As you can see, we are getting close to 33 fps. Animation quality is looking a bit jarring. Hitting the GP bottleneck here. VRAM usage close to 5 GB. Now I'll enable OptiScale scale FSR frame generation. Just open OptiScaler menu by pressing the insert keyboard key. There it is. Size is quite small. Click on the drop down bar next to US scale. Select 0.9 as the option. Size increase. From this drop down bar, make sure XCSS upscale is selected. Version 2.0.1. Auto Explorer setting is on. I'll enable FG Active setting. This will enable frame generation. Enable FG Hotfix setting as well. Set the limit value to 2. First, I'll show you the debug view. Click on save and as so the settings get saved upon game restart. Back to the game. The HUD elements are not visible in the bottom middle MHC. Color palette is exactly the same for the bottom middle and bottom right images. Displays are working properly for all of the images. HUD should not flicker with optical FSR frame generation on. Smoothing effect should work properly. Disable deeper view back to the game I'll move the camera around can observe the added amount of smoothness this is amazing FPS is close to 60 60 to 70 animation quality was looking so jarring without frame generation enabled VRAM usage increased to around 5.2 GB not observing any significant artifacts I'll test the game in another area with a close-up shot of the characters. Go back to Spring Meadows. Now I'm in Spring Meadows. You can also use OptiScaler mod to increase the image sharpness, improve motion clarity. Just open the mod. Check the setting override under sharpness section. By default, it's set to 0.300. I'll just set it to 0.500. You can experiment with the settings here. Now just enable this setting, enable RCAS, expand motion adaptive sharpness section and check this setting, motion adaptive sharpness, again I'll increase its value, set it to 0 0.600, save these settings, back to the game, the image quality is looking slightly sharper now, much cleaner, close up shot of Gustav. And this is the game running at 720p resolution. Upscaler preset set to quality. So everything is working very nicely. And this area is less demanding than the previous one, the continent. Animation quality is looking so smooth. And elements are not flickering. Okay, I'll just show you some combat now. Back to this place. 
I tested the game for about 2 to 3 hours with this new build of OptiScaler mod. The game didn't crash even once with frame generation on. Tag this NPC. Few hiccups at the start of the battle, see. First strike. Use marking shot. Perfect timing for the quick time event. Input delay is not a problem. Oh no, Leon is low on HP. Try to execute a parry. That worked. It's more difficult to execute a parry than a dodge. Another perfect parry. Use Lumi Assault. Oh no, this thing dodged. Should have used my gun. Ice Lance. Perfect parry. Missed my timing there. Just one NPC won the battle. Now I'll show you a cutscene. Test Lyle's fix. Setting up a cam triggered the cutscene. You can see no black bars at the top and the bottom sides. Close up shots in the cutscenes are very demanding. 50 FPS. And this is with frame generation on. Hitting the GP bottleneck, I'll just skip the cutscene. Everything is working properly. Now we're in the manor. You can see lighting is centered properly here. D3, D12 proxy worked as well. In the indoor areas, you'll be getting better performance than the outdoor areas. 75 to 80 FPS, just floating around. See? So everything worked very nicely. This is how you should be playing the game on Rock LR. AFMF2 also works very nicely, but it produces some noticeable artifacts around the character models when the base FPS is on the lower side, like 30 to 40. This does not happen in the case of OptiScaler mod, FSR frame generation. So that's it with the video guys, I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.